Hi, folks. Chris Foss here from the ChrisFossShow.com. The ChrisFossShow.com. Hey, we're coming here with another podcast. Thanks for tuning in as part of our set uh, collapses, I guess. Um, and uh, be sure to like, subscribe to us on YouTube, hit that bell notification uh, so you can get all the notifications for all the different things we're going to be doing. And also subscribe to us on patreon.com for slash Chris Voss. Uh, thanks to AT&T for sharing with us for review purposes the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus and the Note 8 that will be coming out this year that should be exciting. And, of course, Apple uh, iPhones are available. You can go to at and check those out. And uh, I think that's about it. Let's welcome our wonderful guest from askev.com. It's Yvonne Hyman. Uh, how are you doing, Yvonne? Doing great. Thanks for having me, Chris. And don't you love technology? It's just like entrepreneurs and never, work, never ever something works like you plan it to. Yeah, I have my, uh, it looks like one of our lights that make my, give beautification to this uh, thing we call a face. Uh, in the uh, Mars Netherworld uh, landscape of, of uh, skin um, has has fallen and is now uh, lighting up my carpet very well. So we'll see if a fire ensues. Uh, I doubt it will. But uh, welcome to the show. And uh, we wanted to get a chance, of course, to meet you, talk about you, your experience in life, entrepreneurism. Uh, you have an international business and some of the aspects and and learning about uh, what you know for some of our audience members who are interested in expanding their business that way, I think should be pretty cool. So tell us uh, about you and uh, what we need to know. What do you need to know? How many hours do you have? Well, <laughs> you know? uh, start with an hour and then we'll get back to more in the future, I suppose. We'll just take a bit by a bit. Yeah, no, all joking aside, um, I already was a business owner in Germany. I had a little pub and came to the States in 2007, moved into technology actually pretty fast initially with social media and then web design, um, later taking over my late husband's business, Pacific Crest Media, as well as running my own business with AskEV.com, as you mentioned, which is focusing more on helping entrepreneurs run their business more efficiently. And because I just don't like to get bored and start new things, Two years ago, I went into product development and actually got a pen and paper planner developed and sourced it into out of China. Wow, awesome. I've got some friends that source their products out of China, and uh, it's, a, it's an interesting th landscape that they have to uh, use and hoops they have to jump through, but uh, um, they've run great businesses from it. Once, once you learned your way around and you learned the ups and downs of it, it's awesome. But if you start out and you don't have anybody to hold on to that's holding your hands and guiding your way, oh my God, it can be frustrating. <laughs> well, I'm sure between the language barrier and the culture barrier, and then of course the people in China, I know a lot of them uh, communicate or try to communicate with me behind their, their walled off mm -hmm. internet. Uh, that's always interesting. I'll, I'll send them a video or something, and they'll be like, oh, we can't see that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I ran into the same issues, especially when it comes to paying then. Oh. That that portal doesn't work, and this portal doesn't work, and you have the just the difference of personality. So I found somebody, I found a manufacturer that could do exactly what I wanted to do, at least I thought that way, and I reached out to them like, you do to a mentor, I'm like, okay guys, you're doing this for 10 years, I need some hand-holding from you. Can we do this, can we do that, how is that possible? And forget about it, it's, mm -mm, they, will, they will not work this way, you pretty much have to tell them exactly what you want and which features and how and, that was quite a learning curve. So looking at them to helping you, that did not happen, at least with my manufacturer. So let's talk about how you got here from where you went. Uh, you you were born and raised in Germany. Uh, I'm a German uh, from uh, a couple generations back in the 1800s. Um, and uh, how long did you move from Germany to America? So yeah, I was born and bred in Germany 24 years and then came to the States just about 10 years ago, February of 2007, and all just resulted because of a stupid comment. <laughs> so that's actually a funny story. I had a pub in Germany. What do you consider a pub over here? 
And Germany started coming up with the non-smoking law. I'm like, we know that over here. So you, you go to Nevada to be able to smoke and eat at the same time. But in Germany, it's a big deal. It's like, I have a little pub. Economy is already down. 99.9% .9 of my people were smoking, including me at that time. And now you bring up a non-smoking law. And there is no chance getting around of it. They finally found some ways, but initially, you are killing my business. So a friend of mine came to visit, and we had the same conversation. And he's like, you know what? If Germany is so crappy. Why don't you come to the States? And six months later, I was here. Two suitcases and a dog. <laughs> you brought a dog. That's funny. So, uh, so you, you wouldn't leave your kid behind. So my dog is my kid. Uh, there you go. Um, so what? You, so you started your own business, or you took over your business from your your late ex husband or your late husband? Uh, to my understanding. Yes. So um, end of two thousand and eight, I started dating Pete, and he had a video production company. So anywhere from TV commercials, thirty second spots, all the way up to feature length films. That's when I started my own business, Ask EV. Initially, Ask EV was focused on web design and social media because the need in his business was there, so I, I filled that need. Um, through time and after his going through cancer treatment and all of that, and after his passing, I refocused and I'm like, okay, where, where am I taking this? It's like if you don't have a plan or a goal, how are you going to know where you're going? That's when I took over his company, Pacific Crest Media, and made it a full-fledged agency. So all done for you solutions to get people out there. And as Evie moved away from being the web designer to being the consultant, because suddenly I realized I didn't just do web design for people. They came to me for web design, but I ended up doing a full business consulting. I'm like, why are you handling things this way? Why aren't you using those tools? Why aren't you making your life easier? And all of that happened about yeah, nearly three years ago. Wow. Wow. And so uh, now you now you're doing international business, uh, building your own products. Uh, have you ever thought about doing like a Kickstarter with some of the stuff you're doing? Yes, I did. And I actually fell flat on my nose with that. Oh, boy. The, the problem for me is I am not a, a, I always call it fluffy. I know why you need certain tools and I explain to you how they work. I am not somebody to explain to you why you need that tool. In my head, a lot of people already should have that understanding when they come to me. So I approached my Kickstarter campaign completely wrong just because of how I approached the, the value message and did not end up raising enough on Kickstarter, ended up going to Indiegogo, raising enough money to subsidize what I paid to get the, the product manufactured oh. and went that route. So yeah, there was a huge learning curve going Kickstarter and doing that. I think Kickstarter is a really awesome thing where it gives people the, you know, the, the investment uh, that they need to be able to build stuff. In fact, it's kind of funny. So many people that so many companies that actually have money from launching on a Kickstarter, keep going back mm -hmm. to Kickstarter because uh, it's such a community base that you can take and, and build new products from. I know a lot of people that uh, I've seen in their community online that they, they just, that's what they do every day. They, try and design and build new products to put on Kickstarter and they've done multiple Kickstarter programs over the years. Um, it's pretty amazing the, the, the culture that's over there. And uh, I kick myself all the time thinking I really should be working on some products I can put on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. I'll think of some things and, and trying to take the focus over to those places. So in building your business and, and being successful, what are some entrepreneurial things that you found that uh, have been kind of the tidbits of your success? Uh, some of the same things that uh, are mantras or thought processes or concepts that have really contributed to, to uh, uh, making your business successful that can help others. I'm like coming out of when Pete passed away, I was pretty much at zero. I had moved off my clients to other companies for the clients to be taken care of. So I pretty much started back over. 
And the only thing that got me back into business actually were my relationships. That's what kept me going. So pretty much going back to basics and relationship management, calling back to old clients and be like, hey, I'm sorry I dropped the ball on you. I hope my associate took care of you. I'm back in business and I pretty much went from zero clients at that moment back up to 15 and growing from there. So again, getting back into business, I had the luck of having an old customer base to grab onto. And I believe no matter if it's in person or if it's social media, you take care of your people, you are honest with them, you tell them what's going on, no matter if it's good or bad, and they will stick with you. I'm like, I'm, I know it's old style, it's not fancy Facebook advertising, but it works. If people love you, they will come back. Mm -hmm. For me personally, to keep up with all of that, it's planning. It's, it's just like deciding you are going to San Diego rather than to Las Vegas. If you just jump in your car and you go, you have no idea where you end up on. So trying to get back into business, it's chemo brain is real. And believe me, caretaker had the same thing. Um, I needed, I literally have a wall off of whiteboard where I just brain dumped all of my stuff. Where do I want to be this year in five years, 10 years? And just cutting all of those pieces down and into, into monthly goals and into to-dos and habits that I needed to redevelop to really get stuff done. Mm -hmm. It's You don't just jump in the car and go. You do that when you want to kill time, but not if you want to get somewhere. You, you need to know where you are going and get your stuff in place or you're not going anywhere. So it's like, it's not that I have anything new and fancy. The same information is out there. But I'm the proof this stuff works. Those people don't just be like telling you stories. It really does work. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you bring up a good point. Planning for your business, putting up a whiteboard, knowing what your goals, your one, five, ten year, I think is real important. And then being able to focus every day on what you're doing to get you toward those benchmarks is uh, definitely uh, something that uh, you want to take and focus on. So uh, it, it, do, you, do you do consulting with your business on an international scale or is it just for the product that you build? I do consulting in general um, with Ask EV right now. It's, it's state based um, just because there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one calls and everything and we haven't quite time difference. It's just nice and comfortable in US. Um, but it's also the point of things work a lot different in Europe than it does over here. So with when things come down, not that I'm a tax advisor, but when things come down to those little things of, hey, you can save some money over there and you can save some over there, it is more specific to the States than it is to Germany. Would I love to take it there? Yes. And I do have people where I hear and there communicate with but on an ongoing monthly basis, 99% of my business is happening in the States oh, on cool. the consulting. Mm -hmm. cool. Well, you, you, you probably can consult for some of the stuff that's going on in China where uh, you can source your products and things of that nature. Um, I've always admired my friends who can, who can uh, jump that, who can vault that, uh, uh, that bench because it's, <laughs> It's so hard. Even even when I talk to people in China that are trying to get us to review some of their products and stuff like that, the language barrier, cultural barrier, and some of the ways they talk to you is you have to really get used to because they're they they seem to be a lot more direct. Uh, it almost comes across as a demand. Maybe it does, but uh, sometimes you're kind of taken aback with it. Some of the communication where it's like, um, you know, you're talking to me like I'm an object, but maybe I am. Yeah, I wouldn't, um, and I have the same issues coming to the States with the, that intention barrier that we have. We just say things different. Um, a lot of people often think I'm mad with them. So when people meet me the first time, it's like, you're going to know if I'm mad with you. That's just how I talk. Germans are rough there to the point. That's just how it is. <laughs> and so I already had to learn immigrating to the States that just because we think that's their intention it's not that way and i have the same experience with china 
um, you often also have the male female difference with China. It's getting better, but I did run into a couple stories um, to my late husband who did source in China too, where as a female, it's like if you go over there and actually check out the company and, and check out manufacturing, um, the the her, his assistant was more like they they didn't know what to do with her. They so took they were, the guys so out for massages. And, so there's kind of a sexist thing going on over there. They just didn't know what to do with her. It wasn't necessarily in in a sexist way, but they took the guys out for massage and treatment and cute girls and all of that. And what do you do with a girl? She just didn't fit in the plan. So it's getting better. I'm like, my, my contact over there actually is a female. And I also just started to make connections where the language barrier in the future is not going to be a problem because I do now have a person in between that does speak the language, that does know the personalities, that does know how to have those communications. And, oh, my God, it's making life so much easier. So what's the best way to find people like that um, to grow your business or if you're looking to outsource product um, and get those international clients? I mean, do you, you have to find an agency over there that can be the go-between to represent you? or find, find people that have done it before and that are willing to help you. When I started out, because mine is a stationary product, is... I know she was joking about it, but one person came back to me when I when I made the call of, hey, has anybody done this before? Anybody that can help me with this? One lady pretty much said she's going to sell her firstborn child before she's going to give me her connections. And that was the initial that I ran into. Did you ask how much? <laughs> yeah. It's like I ran into a complete wall. I'm like, I didn't ask for free advice. I would have paid her for her consulting wow. because I know how much time and effort it would save me. And there was a complete block to a point where I finally found through a friend of a friend of a friend, how that always goes, um, a lady called Heather Harris, who is an in-between somebody like me and manufacturing in China. The problem is for a first product, you don't want to do a 5,000 quantity. Mm -hmm. You you want to do your samples and you want to start small. You've got to test the, the target market. Is there really a, a market for your product out there? So you don't want to order 5,000 and then sit on them. And that's where her realm is, but she was able to get me into contacts with other people and so on and so on. Because, yeah, you could go out there on Alibaba, find a similar product, and just reach out to manufacturing in China. But believe me, you will spend, you're going to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars with testing manufacturing, figuring out if that manufacturing is right. And it's, pardon my English, you're going to pay a shitload of money <laughs> to get to a point of having a valuable product and potentially through multiple manufacturing. And sometimes so, you do a whole run and it'll be wrong and you have to eat it. So. I I got lucky. We had actually issues on the first run um, mm -hmm. on the inserts. It's, it's a two-piece. You have a sleeve and then you have the insert and they did it wrong. And half of my people that pre-ordered it opened up the packaging and the planner was in half. Oh, no. I got lucky. I was a pain in the butt with my manufacturing. I got lucky and they replaced the inserts at no cost. Wow. And even, even paid the shipping. So yeah, that's the next thing. It's They don't have to deal with you. They don't have to replace a faulty product. Yeah. They don't. But yeah, China, what can I do to them? Yeah. But yeah, I'm like, I'm happy. Um, I, by now, actually, a husband of a new friend of mine is an in-between. He takes care of the whole costumes and shipping and all of that from China and he has a lot of proven connections and manufacturing connections in China too so if somebody sees that and is wanting to do something like that I am more than happy to build that connection and send them over there oh, cool so the SV concept is that is that like basically a thing where they can call you or schedule time I know we schedule time for this podcast using the ask 
Ask IV Services, EV Services. Um, is that is that kind of your brand where people can easily consult with you by phone or or give me a better idea as to what you do with your business in that way and how that works? Yeah, I would love to just say this is what I do, but it's so personalized to each business that it's always difficult to explain. But yeah, it's, I love literally just connecting with people. So if somebody says, hey, that might be something on that, 15 minutes, I jump on a call with anybody and everybody. And that's when I tickle out information from people. It's like, okay, where are you running into issues? What What's not working right? What's annoying you in your business? People mm -hmm. are like, okay, so where do I start? Okay. What's the most annoying part of your business right now? Me. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, that's just where, me where every day I, is, is annoying. So, yeah, that's that's just... We start from the most annoying point. Where where do you I'm feel sure like you can solve this problem though? But most problems you probably can solve. <laughs> Heck, if, if I am the most annoying point in my business, maybe I should just take some time off, go get a massage, maybe a pedicure if you're female, if you're I'm a male, of, maybe a couple I'm beers. I think I'm going all Bruce Jenner sort of thing. Uh, I might look good in heels. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just doing a bit. Um, <laughs> So uh, what we 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 talked we had a guest on earlier. Uh, we were talking about building your business, entrepreneurism, uh, and things of that nature. What do you find that's a good way to get clients and build your business? Because I know that's what a lot of people that are entrepreneurs or single consultants out there uh, they struggle with getting new clients. What what do you find works best for you? Works best for me is showing off my knowledge, which I do in multiple ways. I got the YouTube channel, which is covering multiple topics, just like you do, and just getting the word out there. Keep reposting that. If you start out, you don't have time, so there are some great tools where your videos, for example, you can schedule them as evergreen content, and they just repeat in a certain cycle, and you don't have to redo that. Um, a lot of things also happen through just helping people. So I am in a lot of groups, that's how we met, in a lot of Facebook groups, and I regularly, I try to do it every day, but most of the time it just happens every other day or every three days, where I search in my groups for specific topics. Oh. So if I want to get my planner out there, I'm in a lot of girly groups where we have a lot of females in there, and female entrepreneurs and I literally just type in planner and I see which posts are coming up and see if I can plug my planner if I can give advice that fits that same with web design same with consulting have a list of multiple keywords that you check in Facebook groups and search that way rather than trying to be in those group and be active 24 7 because if you do that you're not going to get any work done that actually pays yeah, that's true. And with that, you just build your following, you, you grow your following, you suddenly have people that are on your side that if they hear something that fits you, they will plug you. But that also means people need to know what fits you. Mm -hmm. So it took for me a while to get to the point of, okay, I'm an efficiency coach. That's, that's what entails everything I do. And it took me time to brand that and let people know that is the topic. That's where I'm awesome at helping at so that they knew when to plug me. Because when somebody comes up with an issue and it fits the efficiency, but I haven't taught my followers this is what I do, I'm not going to pop into their head. Oh, yeah. And you bring up a good point. Uh, we were talking about this earlier on a prior show about uh, being able to get new clients and, and, and build content and put your name out there. But you bring up another point, letting everyone around you know who you are and what you are so they can refer business to you when they come across business being out there. Yeah, it's like it was, it was simple for me being a web designer. That mm -hmm. was a simple one. That's an easy explanation. Everybody knows what they are doing. So if somebody needed help when it came to WordPress or web design in general, I was like, hey, ask Evie. Mm -hmm. It's right there um, with the consulting. It it's again 
when you ask me what am I doing, it is so difficult to drill down on it because it's so personalized that at least as an efficiency coach, it easily tells you, okay, saving time, getting stuff running smooth. Okay, I got slightly an idea of what she is doing. Let's check her out and just jump on a coffee call with her. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's funny. A lot of people avoid getting on calls or talking on calls these days, especially the millennials. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the uh, but it's such a great way to build a business. Uh, if I want to uh, get a new client, the first thing I usually want to do is get them on the phone so that I can really communicate with them, ask them questions, get to know what they want, and it shows a level of personalization and caring that uh, can make such a difference in acquiring new clients because um, the, the, you just can't get over that human connection. Uh, that you can with like emails or fill out this form online sort of thing. Yeah, and it's like we have all of these tools. We have the possibility to meet so many people. Like there, there is no border anymore to how and when to meet people. And I do love to jump on call with people because it's like I'm, I'm sitting here three screens in my four walls and I have the same issue as a lot of other people often have, where it's the, the isolation where I fall into that trap of, oh, look, that person is doing that and that person is doing that. When you scroll through Facebook and everybody just posts their favorite moments and their favorite dinner, and it's like, damn, I've been sitting here for 15 hours kicking booty and I haven't gotten out of the house. <laughs> so I fall into the same traps to me. Those 15 minute calls means I'm actually really meeting a live person. I'm don't, I don't just comment on a thread on Facebook of, ooh, great tacos you had last night. It's a real connection. It's, it's like going outside and meeting you on the street without having to jump on the plane and fly to Las Vegas. Yeah, I've always, I've always thought it's amazing when people want to have conferences and they're like, well, we want to fly you here. And I'm just like, you know, they have this thing called phones and video and Skype and and uh, you don't really need me have it. But if you want to pay for it, then that's your business. But uh, we don't need to do that. So, uh, yeah, it's one of those things. I like your uh, model that you use, the Ask Evie um, sort of thing. It makes it really easy and inviting to where you're just like, ask me. Let's talk. <laughs> and it came about so funny. It's you know, we all run into this issue of how, what are, what are we going to call our business? Mm -hmm. Especially when we start out. I had a name before I even started the business. Um, a friend of mine came to visit from Australia. And why I'm telling the story is I want to tell you, just, just have an open mind. Just pay attention to what other people say. And they came to visit first time in the States and questions over questions. What is this and how does that work and where is that? And in all of those and we had so many questions every day and either way I had the answer or I googled it it's like mm -hmm. I just look it up it's like we are running around with this tool here every single day and her husband was joking you should start a website ask Yvonne.com yeah ask Yvonne wasn't available it's a realtor somewhere so <laughs> my nickname is Evie and that's how the name came about before the business even was born well, it, it flows really nicely. It comes right out of the tongue. Ask Evie. Bada boom. Yeah. Uh, so it's pretty great. So what different, What do you cover pretty much any sort of business consulting with your business? Or, or is there some niches that you hit upon? So where I come in is the overlaying planning. So I have knowledge about the whole online with taxes, running business, project management. And that's where I see the need for somebody like me. It is awesome to work with a person that's specifically onto numbers and taxes, and that's specifically onto project management. But that means you are paying attention to one piece of your business, mm -hmm. which is great if that is your goal right now. But just like planners, if you are just working for the next three months, where are your life goals? Where are your 10 year goals? Where is the overlaying goal to make sure that that specific one you're working on right now feeds into your life goals? Mm -hmm. 
So I'm pretty much the overlaying coach to look at all of those moving pieces. How do they work together? And if needed or wanted, I do have a pool of other people that are way more niche down, that are way more specialized in those different ones. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. That's a great way to build a business. So any other tips that you give people to, uh, that want to be entrepreneurs or that, or that want to be better entrepreneurs uh, that are starting out out there? Yes. <laughs> um, one big thing. <laughs> yes. Great answer, isn't it? Um, one big thing that I have seen a lot of mentors and coaches out there tell you to hustle, which I agree with. Don't get me wrong. You got to put the work in to get to the goal. There is no question about it. But a couple of years back, Gary, Gary V mentioned you got to work, you got to kick ass, you got to do the stuff. Then Grant Cardone just recently published a piece where he says, you know, millennials, they're always traveling, they're just spending money on going places and they don't want to put the work in. So the, the common pitch out there always used to be, and it's starting to slowly change finally, you got to work 24 seven to make stuff happen. No. I totally do not agree. I have been burned out listening to that and doing exactly that and pretty much nearly killing myself doing so next to the experience of life is short. I lost my husband to cancer at 52 who still had so many plans and so many goals that he never accomplished. To me is find that balance, find what's right for you. If it's right for you right now to work 24 seven, go for it. Mm -hmm. If it's right for you to be the mompreneur and just work two hours a day and you can live off of it and you are happy with it, do that. Don't mm -hmm. forget to live while you are building your business because tomorrow is not a given. Do I freak out when my boyfriend says, hey, I can take you to Vegas and then to Santa Barbara because my business is going to slow down that week? I still can work. I can take my laptop with me. I have my phone with me. I still can work. I'm going to put 100% in that I put in when I'm here at home working. Mm -hmm. Do I freak out about it? Yeah, because I got time goals and I got plans. And I got things I want to do, but I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to pass up that chance of going and having that experience. Mm -hmm. So my big tip to people that are starting out is, yes, you got to put the work in. You got to have days where you're working overtime and you got to keep your deadlines to your clients. Mm -hmm. But don't lose sight of actually also living your life. You went into this business, hopefully, because you are passionate about it, because you love what you were doing. Don't burn yourself out on it. Life moves fast. Keep an eye on it as it goes by. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, over the years when I built my business, sometimes I spent too much time focusing on the businesses. And then I found sometimes getting away from the business and taking some time off was actually the best way to uh, do some introspection of my business. And sometimes some of my best changes and improvements to my business were taking a little vacation, even sometimes if it was a weekend, and taking a pen and pad with me and just kind of stepping outside of the box and looking at my box that I built in my business and trying to looking at it from the point of view of like, why do we do things that way? And what, how can we do them better? Um, and uh, th that can really help getting outside of your business and getting back into real life and, and seeing the forest for the trees, if you will. You stepped out of your box. It's like when, when we are in our environment, it's this, okay, I got deadlines. I want to take care of my clients. This is what I have to do. When you take a week or two off, and for me, it's the ocean. It's just the noise, the smell. Just going there and just telling my clients, I'm off for a week. So like, mm -hmm. if you have something burning, I'll be there for you. But regular day-to-day -day business, I'm off for a week. And suddenly, the mind just quiets, where the everyday noise, the ripples are just quieting down. And suddenly, things arise that were right back here, but you didn't hear them through the daily noise of, of your daily to-dos. 
my dogs do that they'll come up when i'm working too much or too hard or something and they'll be like it's time for you to play with us and entertain us and you need to stop doing this stuff for a while and and be the go see life as it goes by and I, they're really helpful that way whenever they come bug me i try and make it a habit of stepping away from whatever i am if i can and go play with them for a little while they don't they don't take up a lot of my time you know they like to go to the dog park they like to run around but stepping away from your business and and vacationing or traveling or or just sometimes getting out into a different environment can really help because sometimes you really get trapped by the box around your mind and it's hard to see uh new ways of doing things new new ways of improving things and being able to get out of your environment mm -hmm. and, and then be able to look back on it and go what am I doing over there? And reanalyze everything can really be helpful when you're starting a business. And all of those are great points. Um, one of the things you just said is experience how other people do things. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was an electrician. I actually learned electrician in Germany too. His big thing was you are not learning from me. If you ever want to take over the company, he didn't want me to be into the same mindset and to the same how to do things than he was. So he made sure I learned my profession in a different company because chances are they're going to run their business differently than I do. Mm -hmm. So one big starter, one big energizer for me is meeting other people. For example, I, I was actually in Vegas just a couple months ago for Connect Her. Oh my God, it was such a booster for me. Um, I was in that trot of, I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to do that and I want to do that. And some were overwhelmed and at the same point, tired. It's because mm -hmm. I have all of those plans and where do I start? And I went to Connect Her to speak, to help people run their business more efficiently. And I left so energized. I cranked out a whole bunch of videos and a whole bunch of workbooks that are nearly done. And it's this from wallowing at home and getting into this point of nobody is listening to me. Nobody wants to hear what I'm saying to heck. Yeah, we are doing this. So when you get into those, those wonky days, even just find, a local BNI and go visit for a morning or a meetup or whatever it is and just get together with a couple other entrepreneurs that can feed you that energy back. Yeah. I, I run several meetup groups here in Las Vegas. I think about seven of them. And uh, and and they're very ideal, even for me, even though I run them, uh, just to get out of the house, get out of the office be able to meet some new people get some fresh ideas in my brain I really enjoy doing that and uh, meeting some other entrepreneurs and and seeing what they're doing going oh what why aren't I doing some of that um, but yeah sometimes getting out of the, out of your box is, is a real important factor of uh, being an entrepreneur as it as it were like I'm making I'm even making it a habit to every week at least meet a handful of people for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Take mm -hmm. that time off, get out of the house, and just talk with people. It's not even a pitch or anything. It's just catching up. What are they doing? And I leave energized after every single one of those meetings. Yep, yep. Just sometimes getting out of your own world and, and learning something new is an important thing. And people can find those on meetup.com. Mm -hmm. uh, Meetup.com has been always been a great resource. Anytime I move to a new city where I don't know anybody, Meetup.com has been a place where I can go. I can go to networking events, business mm -hmm. events. Sometimes you might get some business out of it, but normally I go to the events just to socialize and kind of expose myself to some other ideas, uh, other ways people are doing business. Um, and sometimes I find uh, different uh, synergies that I can have with other people in their business we can work together on projects um, but it's sometimes it's nice just to hear how other people are leading their lives and and it's like well wow okay all right, I need to get out of my own sort of tunnel vision in what I'm thinking and doing it happens so often even just in in our personal life where that that spiral down where it's like 
it's starting with social media. Nobody is listening to me. Nobody is really liking. They all just like it automated because of hashtags. We all have those days. And if you don't catch that spiral down, getting to a point of just feeling the loneliness and having the bad side of social media that is talked about everywhere else, um, just getting out there and seeing that there are people out there. Here, me, lost a husband. Okay, she was crappy, happens. But I often also look at other cancer widows that had way more to deal with than I did. Mm -hmm. For me, it was a crap, don't get me wrong. I had to learn a lot. There were a lot of tears. There was a lot of depression. Yes, but I look at other cancer widows and suddenly I realized they went through 12 years of cancer treatment with their husband. 12 wow. years. I had two. Wow. They had a fight at the end where somebody just didn't want to let go. For me, it's like he fell asleep. I didn't have that traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. So connecting with people and getting out there and even on a personal level suddenly can show you the grass might not necessarily be greener on the other side. Yeah. Like funny, I just saw that meme, I think it was yesterday. I don't know who that who was quoted on there. But it said, um, if you're looking at the grass being greener on the other side, start watering your own. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> it just is. So reaching out with other people and building those connections, no matter if it's video, which to me is nearly as good as meeting them out in the wild, but taking it off of the written word hearing how people interact, getting the facial impression, getting the different voice levels, which makes a conversation to me. Mm -hmm. Like I've had it. I, I write a comment and explain something on Facebook and somebody thinks I'm mad with them and I'm bitching at them and that's not how I meant it. It's I'm just the German and I don't know how to put it in the right words. So just just taking it into a video call or taking it into a personal life just expands that experience so much more and just so much more for you. Nice, nice. Uh, well, um, any, anything else you want to cover uh, as we wrap up the show? Um, yeah, just, just get out there, try to be positive. Um, find people, that whole saying of you are the sum of the five people that surround you the most time, it is true. Mm -hmm. It really is. So go find some people that are as excited about business as you are and find the balance between building a retirement, building for the future, but also living now. If I'm, if I'm the, the most of the people I spend most of the time around, I'm probably a Siberian Husky or a dog. <laughs> I think that's what <laughs> So that's probably where I'm at it. Uh, which explains why I've been licking myself and eating my own poo. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I only do that on Wednesdays. Uh, so, but thanks for coming on the show, Yvonne. Uh, everyone thanks check out Yvonne's website. Give us your plugs. Tell us where we can find you on the interwebs. To make it simple for everybody, all of the links, all of the social media links, all of the contact forms are on askev.com. You'll find it all right there. And if you want to know something in specific, there is a scheduling form right under contact. Jump on a coffee call with me, 15 minutes, it's yours to whatever you want to do with it. So I can, get, I, I can get 15 minutes of your time to ask you about my business, how to improve it, all that sort of good stuff. Whatever you want to cramp into 15 minutes, as long as it's not necessarily naked pictures. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's always those people that... I, uh, I did online you know. dating. I, yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> so um, take a look at that, guys. Uh, we certainly appreciate Yvonne for coming on the show.
giving us some advice on how to be a great entrepreneur and build your business. And uh, thank you very much, Yvonne. Uh, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to us on YouTube, hit that bell notification so you get all the uh, notifications when we go live with our podcasts and the rest of the reviews we do on the Chris Foss Show. Thanks to AT&T for sharing with us, of course, the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. It's actually helping us TriCast right now on Periscope and also Facebook Live. So be sure to follow us on those channels as well. Be sure to go to patreon.com for us, Chris Voss, and support the channel there. And we'll see you next time, and watch for more shows and more wonderful guests. Thanks again, Yvonne, for coming on the show. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for having me. Thank you.